Um, now, you know, you've talked about, you, you chose wholesale, you said that's something that I'm going to concentrate on, that I'm going to focus on. Um, you talked that focus was one of your biggest challenges getting started. Yeah. Uh, you also mentioned that, uh, that systems as well, um, that was one of your challenges. Can you, can you talk a little bit about, we all hear about systems and, you know, we all hear about, uh, you know, the e-myth and how to compartmentalize your business mm -hmm. and how to be able to structure it so you're not doing everything. Um, it's almost one of those words that's overused. Can you talk about how you've actually used systems in your business? Um, and, and I guess first, how it was a challenge and how you've overcome that challenge as far as systems. Colin, the way that I've overcome system challenges in my business and myself, as I'm sure you are and, and a number of other folks listening to this uh, today, are that you know we like to be in control. Yeah. I'm an entrepreneur, of course. You know, I'm the head of, I'm the owner of my business. I need to be in control, and that's one of the toughest things that I found. In, in systematizing my business is just to kind of let go, huh. is, to, is to plan out you know what exactly needs to be done, explain yeah. it so that anybody can do it, and then just let go. Mm. And, and, and folks will do it good enough. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect. Mm. And, and I can pay somebody if I hire somebody in India, which is the beauty of the internet today. I mean, yeah. I can hire somebody for four bucks an hour to place daily ads on the internet for me, and that's totally systematized. I don't have to think about it. it costs me less than 10 bucks a week. Wow. To have that done. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and there's just all kinds of tasks that can be and need to be systematized if, if you truly want to get out of the business and have like a four hour work week type of schedule where, you know, we do other stuff that, you know, like I get to play golf or, or you yeah. build your real estate investor company or, you know, we do whatever it is that we love besides real estate. Yep. And you made a great point. And actually, um, for everyone that's, that's checking out this interview and checking out Darren, if you look at his attire right now, and uh, we don't have a, a picture of uh, the below, but he's in shorts right now. He's got his flip flops completely, <laughs> completely, there he is. And now you see completely relaxed and, uh, and casual. And that's one of the cool things that I really liked about um, real estate and doing my own business is because if you want to throw on a suit, you can. If you want to be relaxed, you can do that as well. Um, and that's something that Darren, he does excellent, which is work hard, but take the systems, delegate those things out so that you can also be able to enjoy life too because you know this life is, uh, is not meant to, to spend 80 hours a day working. You might do it for a while, but set up those systems. Another system that you use is your answering service that when motivated sellers call you, um, that they get to a uh, answering service that, I mean, you're not even talking to the people on the first uh, the first time out. Can you talk about that a little bit? Answering services, it's totally revolutionized my, my business and my life because when I first got started and, and I was driving calls to my, to my cell phone and I'm talking to sellers at all times during the day and the first 20 to 25 people before I get a deal, they're not motivated. Yeah. And they're asking too much and they need to be talking to a realtor and not an investor. Um, so answering service has just been, been huge. They call 24 hours a day, live operator service, if you can afford it, yeah. I would suggest that. Or you can do just like voicemail services. But please, 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 for your sanity, <laughs> and if you are serious about staying in this business for the long haul, yeah. you have to get an answering service and get those seller calls off your plate. You cannot yeah. be having sellers interrupting dinner or time with family or you know time when you're not working. Yeah. So I have them call to my 24 hour answering service. They ask all the questions, get all the information and I receive it on an email mm -hmm. and I can sit from my desk. I check my email twice a day. Uh, at night I can check all the calls from the previous day and I see the addresses, how much they're asking, why they're selling, are your payments current, all the information I need to to see if it's a deal and worth worth a second call and, and pursuing. Excellent. Now, some folks that are against that, when they want to have it go directly to their cell phone, a lot of educators, speakers will say, I go have it directly to my cell phone because that's the money line and I'll pick it up at any time of the day. Do you feel um, that if it's not going directly to your cell phone, that time period, let's say it's five hours, seven hours, is that time period uh, do you, have you lost any deals in that, or is it really uh, what you found? Does the pros outweigh the cons? Colin, I would say that that there are very, very, very few cons as a, as opposed to the pros because mm -hmm. the pros are just. I don't know about you, but me personally, I used to have the money line and folks call and just leave a voicemail. Yeah. 
I after after two weeks, I could not motivate myself to do it, and the calls were just sitting there for two or three days. Yeah. I don't know if I'm like every other person, but that's just my experience. Yeah. And I I've find it hard to get motivated and to call these folks and return the and return the voicemails when I can just pay my answering service to gather all the information I need to see if it's a deal and worth me taking the next step on the on the property. Right. It's it, it's huge. The yeah. pros far 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 outweigh the cons. Yeah. I, I have to agree with you on that too because for me, when I was taking all the phone calls, it, it, I didn't. Ma it didn't matter if, some, if it was a motivated seller or if it was somebody yep. that was, you know, hot to trot, um, ready to go. I was <laughs> they were excited. all the same. I, yeah, you know, I, I love that. But you know, when you all when you have those motivated sellers or that are not motivated sellers, those people that are just kicking the tires, um, you know, they, they don't need to sell for six months, eight months, a year. They're just really trying to figure out who you are, mm -hmm. or it's a contractor right. that wants your services, or, I mean, you just get constantly... Or constantly a city official saying, oh, come take your signs yeah. down. Or, or the, yeah, <laughs> yeah the code enforcement, too. Or Officer Williams yeah. saying, take your sign down now. Yeah, right. Uh -huh. we, we've had a few of those, too. <laughs> had a few of those. Um, so, uh, I guess, kind of go through, um, I mean, that's great as far as those challenges. Um, and, and you talked about the answering service. Let's actually go through, um, and there's no right way, and there's no, you know, everyone should do it this way, but you found a way that has been able to be very effective, that you've been able to make hundreds of thousands of dollars with your wholesaling business. Um, what's the system? A, a phone call comes in, you know, I, I'm a motivated seller, I gotta sell in a week. I gotta sell yesterday. You ever get some people, you say, how soon do you need to sell? Yep. And they say, last week. Yep. And that's a, for me, that was always a, a good indicator on, man, these, these folks are, are ready to go. So let's say, you know, I, I call in and I say, Darren, I gotta sell. Now I'm moving to across the, the country. I have to move. Can't have mortgage payments. I gotta go. I wanna be peace out in one out, week, done, out. forget yeah. about it. It's a motivated seller. Um, you know, and it comes through, it goes into your answering service. Kind of take us briefly um, through the process of how it goes through you to the actual point of when you're going to the title company or when the title company is cutting out that check, paying you for your services. Okay, so, so kind of a step-by-step -step yeah. from the start of when the phone call actually comes in to the time when I'm getting it submitted to the title company and the closing is set. And it's, yep, and getting that money, going to the bank. Going as, to the uh, bank. As my mentor said. Cha-ching, yeah. yeah. That's, the, that's the whole reason for being in business, too, yeah. is, you know, the bottom line. What's, yeah. what's the bank account look like? So, yeah. um, so the, the, the phone call comes in. I, I get it on my text messaging from my phone. So if I see a message that's where the person's really hot to trot, or somebody says I have a place that's for sale for five thousand dollars. You know those things. I'll call back right away. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I'll, I'll go back at night, check my email, uh, print out all the messages, and then just go through and look at them and see why I should call this person back. Okay. Um, so once I call them back, uh, I, I I pull up their property on the computer, auditor site, and then the comp service. See what the houses are selling for, and uh, it, it, if it looks like we're in the ballpark, and if they're very motivated and open to uh, other options besides just let's list it and sell for cash. Uh, great. The next step is I'll set a time to go out to the property and inspect the house. Mm. Um, an inspection is important and, and, and it would help if, if you're just getting started. What I did was I, I called a couple contractors and had them meet me out at the properties. Bid out this job, kind of picking their brains, seeing what they're looking for. And that's a way to really get a good idea of, of what's going on with these. Because most, most houses you're going to wholesale are going to need work. Right. And if you don't know what to look for with the repairs, you could say it needs 5000 in repairs, but it really needs 20000 How many of those properties does it take before people start seeing your stuff and saying, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about? Yeah. So that's an important part of it. That aside, uh, once we inspect the property, we come to an agreement on the price and terms. Once that decide, once that's decided, I like to just get a contract signed at the same time. Okay. And then it's off to market in the property. Okay. So right once right, once right the title there. is clear, 